Good morning. It's good to see all of you. Um, our attendance is down a little bit today. I guess people are partying. <laughs> Happy New Year. Um, okay. Our movie night is going to be on Friday the 12th, and we're going to be seeing the movie Miracles from Heaven. This is based on a true story of a mother who has a child with an um, illness who has not, doesn't have a treatment for it at the time, and with her pursuit in trying to get something to take care of her daughter. Um, Jennifer Garner stars in it, if you know who she is. Then we have the spaghetti dinner. And they're selling tickets, to, or giving tickets today. John has them. Um, it'll be $10 per plate. They do have takeout. Um, they, do, they want you to purchase the tickets ahead, before the um, dinner so we know how many people to count on. Um, and then on January the 14th, we're going to have Don Shaw back with us. Um, he's the musician that comes and does a little bit of comedy. And he, he does the whole service that day. Um, and then uh, those of you that need statements for about what, of how your uh, spending was for the past year for taxes, if you could let me know so that we can get those prepared for you. Okay. Um, let us now stand and greet our neighbors. If you could start taking your seats, please. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word. Above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word. stand and join me in the call to worship. We have welcomed the Christ child and declared the glory of God's salvation that comes to live among us 
and yet still we wait. We prepare to welcome a new year, thankful for how God has brought us through the past year, and anxious to discover what the new year might bring. We join generations of Simeons and Annas who learned and taught us how to listen, notice, and discern divine love at work in the world. Come, let us worship God, whose love endures from generation to generation, guiding us from one year to the next. Come, let us worship as we live in anticipation of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Our song of preparation is Angels We Have Heard on High. It's on page 238 if you want to use the hymn. Just as angels we have heard on high, sweetly swinging o'er the plain, and the mountains to reply, echoing their
Now's the time we go to the Lord with our joys and concerns. Does anybody have anything today? Okay. I'm Joy, or Kathy, I'm sorry. Okay, any others? Mer or <laughs> Londa. <laughs> Sorry. Mary? Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm sure. Okay. Any others? Um, I have a joy. The caller that does our square dance class was rushed to the emergency room last week. Um, he got hot and sweaty and really weak all of a sudden. Um, so they called the ambulance, and as soon as they got there, they said his blood pressure was way too low. They had to get him to the hospital. And I just had a message from him this morning. They did, ran a whole battery of tests, and there's nothing wrong with him. He said this happened about five years ago, too. So, so he's at home and up and about. So, Anything else? Okay, I, he had told me he'd be back around the 11th. Well, he, he, oh, he changed it. Okay. <laughs> he needs to be, have a frequent yeah, triflator. Okay. Okay. Any others? We'll have our prayer now. Please join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we come to you with joys and concerns. We're grateful for the healing of John, who was sick for a couple weeks, Lord. We're grateful that he's back in the pew and, and selling tickets to the spaghetti dinner, Lord, ready to do your mission here on earth, Lord. We're thankful for our square dance caller who who obviously had some health issues, but through testing, everything is normal. May you continue to look out for him and his well-being and be with his family, Father. We lift up the family of Kathy. We lift up those, Father, who have lost loved ones. We lift up Maria, whose husband is in the hospital. May you be with Maria in a time where she may not know what to do, Father, but use us to help her along the way. Help us, Lord, to be your comforting arms. Help us to lead her where you need her to go. May you pour your peace over her during this time and be with the hospital staff for her husband. We lift up Larry for traveling mercies. May you be with him as he returns back to Florida. May he make it safely to Lena Vista. And, Father, for all of those prayers that go unspoken, you know our hearts. 
be with each and every one of us as we carry those burdens, Lord, that we may give them to you and not try to carry them alone. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to go into a time of offering, so let's prepare our hearts for giving. feel like we missed a song in there. <laughs> there is a song? Did someone say there is a song? We do have a special song, but we're going to do it after. So, it's New Year's Eve. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. Are you having to think about that one? So going into the new year, have any of you uh, made any New Year's resolutions? Are you past that? You're over that in your life. You're just living it. Just living it up. 
So I officially realized I'm old yesterday. Old. You know, so do all of you know, have all of you been to Old Town? Or you know what Old Town is? And, and growing up, I remember going there to see the old cars. And when I say old cars, I mean old cars that I never seen drive on the road. So when we decided to go, we were looking up online to see what time the cruise was so that we could see the cars come by. And so it has all the information for if you wanted to enter your car. And do you know that if you drive an 85-year car, if your car was made in the year 85, you can drive through the Old Town Cruise. That just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> so going into the new year, some of us may feel like time is just flying by. And I know several people used to tell me in my life, enjoy it now because at this point, it's going to seem like everything is going so fast. Don't miss anything. You're going to want to slow down and enjoy life. So this morning, as we anticipate going into a new year, I thought it would be a great time to talk about our covenant with the Lord. And instead of focusing on things that we may be taken out of our life or adding to our life, maybe we could focus on our covenant and being more like Jesus in the new year and not letting the time slip away from us that we have to be his hands and feet here on earth and to finish the mission that he started. But a, a covenant is a binding agreement between two people. And it usually comes along with uh, promises, commitments, and conditions. Now, in a covenant, each party agrees to fulfill their specific obligation. And it is full of expectation, the expectation of trust and faithfulness. An example of that would be a marriage covenant. In a marriage covenant, we make promises to each other, such as to love and cherish in sickness and in health, for richer or for poor. And a marriage covenant involves a mutual commitment. It's a trust. And it's an expectation on both partners to withhold their responsibilities. So our scripture today comes from Isaiah 61, 10 through 62, 3. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's pray. Oh God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and claimed us for your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our innermost being and receive us in mercy. 
for the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So as we gather on this New Year's Eve, there's a divine invitation for us to reflect, to renew, and to rejoice. Our scripture from Isaiah paints a vivid picture of God's promises, his joy, and his transformative power. In Isaiah 61.10, we read about putting on garments of praise instead of a spirit of despair. As we enter the new year, let us clothe ourselves in gratitude and praise. For it is through the, this attire that we prepare our hearts to receive the fullness of God's blessings. Putting on the garments of praise involves cultivating, it's a cultivating spirit. It's a spirit of gratitude, a spirit of worship, and a spirit of joy. It means choosing to focus on positive aspects of our lives, expressing thankfulness, and acknowledging God's goodness even in the challenging times of our lives. We need to engage in prayer. We need to engage in worship. And we need to engage in acts of kindness and help to foster others with this same attitude. Essentially, it is about adopting a mindset acknowledging the source of hope and joy in one's faith. The promise of becoming oaks of righteousness speaks of strength and stability. In the coming year, let us resolve to stand firm on our faith, rooted in God's righteousness, and be a source of a shelter and support for others. Now the phrase, oats of righteousness, where the prophet describes transformation, it symbolizes strength, stability, and a flourishing life. In this context, becoming oats of righteousness suggests that through God's work, individuals will, spirit will be spiritually strong. We will be morally upright and firmly rooted in our righteousness. It conveys the idea of a transformed and resilient community or an individual standing tall in their faith and in integrity. Isaiah 61.3, it says, The crown of beauty. The crown of beauty is a metaphorical language. It is used by the prophet to describe the transformative work of God. This phrase symbolizes the restoration and adornment of his people. Instead of ashes and mourning, God promises to provide a crown of beauty, a symbol of honor, dignity, and splendor. It signifies the positive transformation and elevated status that God bestows upon those who experience his grace. Those who experience redemption and they turn their sorrows into a display of his beauty. I would like to take this time and use as a time of reflecting and sharing. I don't know if someone would mind do, having the microphone and carrying the microphone. If we do have someone out there that would like to do that, um, that would be great. But as we reflect on the past year, acknowledging the ashes, what are the ashes in our lives? What are the things that we have gone through this year? Think back over 2023. Some of us may have gone through some pretty horrific things. Some of us may have not gone through things that are horrible, but things that you might not want to do again. Things that you wish were different. 
But I just want to take some time for you to share those challenges and those struggles. If you would like, no pressure. In the new year, let us anticipate the crown of beauty, the restoration, and the divine transformation that God will bring. Let's remember those things, but also realize that God brought us through those things. Anyone would like to share? Maybe some health issues, a family, a friend. Heidi? Um, My family's been going through a personal struggle. We've had Somebody in family, uh, my brother, who's left and gone his way, um, a prodigal, and uh, we pray, and it's been very difficult, you know, especially with, um, you know, the holidays, um, and and just every day, and then birthdays, and uh, so he totally shut us out, but um, there's uh, forgiveness, and there's a wanting for him to come back, and... um, um, you know, some some days are, are hard for me. I just, God is a God of victory. And um, God answers prayer in his time. He makes things beautiful. He makes relationships beautiful. And um, I have that trust, and I pray that my parents have that trust and keep on keeping on. Um, again, it's not a matter of, of our time schedule when God answers prayer. But it's um, it's a matter of his time, and uh, victory is is ours. Um, I mean, I've I've claimed that because um, that's who God is. God is a God of victory, and there's some things that we don't know. We're we're in or we're finite. We have finite brains, not infinite brains. So um, God has made the right choice, and He always makes the right choices. So that's a lesson learned. It's still hard but um, face the facts, and and that's what faith is all about. Anyone else like to share? No? I didn't realize we had some people with such perfect lives. (laughs) Isaiah paints a beautiful picture of a city not forsaken. So even though you might not feel like sharing, we've all gone through things in 2023. We have. Things have not gone the way that we have wanted them to go. We've had things that have upset us, things that hurt our feelings. Some of us have had health issues that we wish we did not have to go through. We have family members who have health issues that we don't want to see them go through. But this picture of this city that's not forsaken. Joy, did you have something? Thank you for sharing, Joy. Sounds like a nice trip. <laughs> so we are a people recognized and cherished by God. No matter what we went through in 2023, we can go into 2024 knowing that we are cherished. Those ashes There's something beautiful. This is our identity as we step into the new year. A people who are not abandoned, 
but embraced by our Creator. So when you think about the things that you went through in 2023, to know that you're not abandoned, but you're adored. As we stand in the threshold of a new year, God extends an invitation to renew our covenant with him. It is not just a transition of time but a divine moment for us to recommit ourselves to his purpose and his plans. The call to arise and shine is a beacon of hope in this coming year. It is a call to step into the light of God's presence and to shine with his love and his grace. As we embrace this call, let us allow his light to dispel any darkness within our lives or in our community. Just like marriage, having a covenant with the Lord means entering into a sacred and binding agreement with God. Let's not walk into the new year alone. Let's commit ourselves to the Lord with a new covenant. A covenant a mutual commitment. God makes promises and has expectations of obedience. He expects worship and loyalty from all of us who enter into this covenant. God's covenant includes promises, blessings, protection, guidance, redemption, these promises reflect God's faithfulness and his desire for a close relationship with his people. We are his people. A covenant with the Lord comes with expectations of obedience to God's commandments and to God's principles. The covenant relationship is not one-sided. It requires active participation and adherence to God's ways. Throughout the Bible, there are examples of consequences of breaking the covenant with God. However, God's mercy and his forgiveness are always emphasized. So it doesn't count you out if you failed to withhold the commandment or if you failed to withhold in your current covenant. Because our great God is merciful. He's loving. Some examples of the Bible covenants would be Noah, Abraham, the Mosaic covenant, and the new covenant through Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judea. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their mind and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Having a covenant with the Lord is a profound and transformative commitment. It shapes our relationship with God. It influences our beliefs, our values, and our actions. It is a spiritual journey. And it is marked by trust obedience, 
and the recognition of God's enduring love and faithfulness. As we enter the new year, may we do so with hearts full of praise, rooted in righteousness, adorned with the promise of beauty, and confident in the knowledge that we are not forsaken. This is a year of divine manifestation of God's glory revealed in and through us. Let us therefore arise and shine, for the light of the Lord has come. As we go into a time of renewing our covenant, if you feel so led, you can stand as we repeat the prayer together, or you can sit. The covenant will be on the screen or it will be in your hymn number 607. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside by thee. Exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartedly yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Happy New Year, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. As we go into a time of communion, let this year mark a new us. Let us be a different person leaving here, transformed from the inside out. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Let's pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Let's jo please join me in the Apostles' Creed. Again, you can stand or you can stay seated. It is on page 881 or on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Since he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess 
our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the announce and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people he healed the sick fed the hungry and he ate with sinners by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks. Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts and of wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I know that we said the Lord's Prayer during our prayer this morning, but you can never say the Lord's Prayer too much. So please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. As we start coming up, as you wish, we will serve communion. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are yours, yours as we stand at the table you set, yours as we eat the bread, our hearts can't forget we are the sign of your life with us yet we are yours we are yours take our bread we ask you take our hearts we love you take our lives oh father we are yours we are yours. Your holy people standing washed in your blood. Spirit filled yet hungry, we await your food. We are poor, but we brought ourselves the best we could. We are yours. We are yours. Take our bread. We ask you. Take our hearts. We love you. Take our lives. Oh, Father, we are yours. We are yours. Mm -hmm. Take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you, take our lives, oh Father, we are yours, we are
Thank you, Pat. That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us. So God will write a new covenant on our hearts. God will be our God, and he will be, and we will be God's people. No longer shall we teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for we shall all know God. In, this, in the name of God, the source of life, the word of truth, and the spirit of love, go in peace. Amen. I'm sorry, that's where I messed up. We have another hymn. Amen, we're not perfect, right? Christ is born. The shepherds hear the silent flocks by night. Behold the heavens, there stood a holy light. Oh, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and there. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While the shepherds gathered through and brought up off the earth, rang out the angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born, and God sent us salvation. That blessed single more. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go 
tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. I think we made it through well. Go in peace and be the light of Christ. Amen.